Warriors. Good turnaround Tuesday to everybody. How's everyone doing today? Ziggy, hi, Kevin, Glenn, Patrick, Thomas, Vlad, yes, sir. First of all, kudos again to Blake Morrow for recommitting to the long side of Euro yesterday. Talk about 113. I hope you could clean it up. We're not quite there yet, Blake. Great call. I have to say something about Blake. He never wavered on the dollar, that it just never got going. His trader intuition and uh, just his basic feel for what's going on in the markets, it's amazing to me. And I want to congratulate him on it. It's really do or die for the dollar right now. It's the way it looks to me. The better hold in here. Also, I want to point out something that's happening with Forex Analytics. So we may have a false breakout happening here in Kiwi. Uh, we took out, Blake's been talking about 7320. We broke out through this trend line and we're now beginning to fail. And I don't know about you guys, but the man hours that go into the research here, I don't know what you guys think your time is worth. I mean, even at minimum wage, you know, $10, $12 an hour, uh, all the man hours that go in, I'd be spending about another 50 hours a week to try and come up with critical numbers and patterns and play to uh, uh, be on top of all these different instruments. So go ahead and click the link on the page here and go to meeting, uh, the www.forexanalytics.com. Uh, it's a great value because if you think of how much time you would have to spend to have all this uh, great research and information, uh, I guarantee it would cost you 10 times as much to be able to do it. So great edge uh, with Forex Analytics here. So looking here at uh, Kiwi and even Greg uh, had some harmonics up here. This is Nick's harmonic look here. And we're, we got to 7340 and failed. So consider signing up today so that you're prepared for this dollar route that's been underway for a while. And let me just get to a few things just before I hand it over to Blake. Hope everyone's doing okay. So I was one for two yesterday, Aussie Yen. I was a day early. Still think it's going to head lower, but the S&P was right on the button. If you recall yesterday, I said sell the S&P a piece at 61.8. That was here, okay, at the 61.8. And another piece at 78.6. So uh, big trade there. You have uh, many, many pips if you took that call. Aussie Yen, I was a bit early. Steve Volge was definitely, definitely right about uh, the Aussie Yen heading up. But I do see the commodity currencies look a little heavy to me. Uh, I already talked about the Aussie, uh, the Kiwi, and here's the Aussie starting to look heavy to me as well. Quite a bit off its highs already. And even the uh, yen crosses on the commodity currencies, Aussie yen took out the stops over the high and diverged up here. And I think it was Luca last week who said there was an Oster pink or short up here in Kiwi Yen. Uh, that's looking negative with some nice divergence as well. So uh, that's my initial take on what's happening in the markets here. I hope some people were able to take advantage of Blake's great call, recommitting to the long side. I never heard him say get short euro. Uh, FX analytics was never bearish to euro during this whole advance. And with that, Blake, if you're around, I'd like to turn it over to you. Great trade, and I really uh, admire your conviction because uh, I thought we might get 99 in the Dixie. Great call, and it's really an advantage being with you and the team here. Well, thank you very much, Dale. I appreciate it. Um, now you're gonna you you, you may be uh, you may be a little uh, shocked to hear I actually pulled the euro off the table last night before I went to bed because. I had <laughs> uh, no, no, but but here's the thing: is I had too many dollar shorts going into last yes. night, and and so the the same trade, um, you know. So here's a euro dollar; it obviously rallied on some draggy comments. The same trade is being short the U.S. dollar, Swedish krona, and being short the U.S. Right. dollar, Norwegian krona. And so right. I, but but what I did do uh, today wow. is I pulled I pulled those trades off the table. 
Um, because, you know, I know the euro is up against 113. So I did take some really, um, and, and I took profits yesterday too, just, just so you know, on the euro, I just unfortunately left about, oh, 80 pips on the table. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Blake, just uh, give me, I, I have no idea. And that's why I'm asking this. Uh, and I, I know how hard the team works, but what would you say man hours go into, you know, all the key uh, support and resistance areas, all the different patterns in play. Every week, man hours between you and the team go into having the product that we have. Oh, and uh, I'm guessing, one? yeah, I'm guessing uh, at least 100. A week? Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, during during the day between, I mean, I, I, I watch, like, Nick do her updates. She's, she's doing them for you know, hours on end, uh, yeah. myself and Steve, between the two of us, we do it for hours on end. Then, then Stelios, you know, uh, a couple of times a week spends hours updating the macro stuff. Um, yeah. and then, then having your, your, your daily webinars and you got, uh, you know, I mean, there's a and lot Grega, of, and Greg, 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 he, he does his work throughout the course of the European morning and publishes it. Um, yeah. You know, so I mean, the 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 amount of hours that that is just daily for for daily analysis, um, yeah. you know, th with all of our different types of analysis for each particular pair. I mean, you're 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 talking, you're talking, you know, probably I don't know, um, maybe yeah. 15 hours a day in analysis that that the team puts in, um, okay. uh, and that and that's not in include like the stuff that we're watching intraday too. I mean, right. you know, I'm so close to a hundred hours a week during the five, plus you do the weekend. You know, I don't know about you, man, but uh, to me at my stage, time is my most uh, precious currency. And there, you know, should I, be to I, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, for everybody, but uh, to be able to have at your fingertips things that would take you uh, you'd never be able to sleep to have all this information at your fingertips. That's my point. Is that uh, you know a lot of traders also have this assistance. They pay them a they pay them a salary to do this type of work, and they're not even um, veterans like the whole team is. So you know, I look at the value of time. You, know, you can't put a dollar amount on it. I'm just you know, I, I I probably sound like a salesman, but to me, it's amazing all the man hours that go into uh, producing this product and how much time it saves a trader just to pull up the traffic light page and have it right there for them. Yeah, that, I mean that's, that, I that's that's the thing. I mean, if you can go, if you can go, uh, you know, at the end of the night in Europe or the end of the day here in the U.S. and in, in late in the afternoon, and look at all the updates that are done, you know, throughout the course of the day, and you can go, oh my God, look at you know. This I wasn't even looking at this uh, this bat pattern here on the euro or oh, oh yeah. you know you know yeah. oh my gosh did did I didn't know we were you know we were breaking higher through through the seven eight six retracement in the euro dollar you know right. you the, all that all that is just it isn't it is at your fingertips and 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 you get a you get a running you know running update of when things are posted too you you go oh you know you just get up and you look at the live stream here and you go oh you know there's there's a new update for the, uh, you know, for uh, Ethereum or, you know, or the yeah. Euro dollar or, you know, you, you see, uh, you know, comments, you know, news, news, news comments from the live stream. I mean, all this stuff is just right at your fingertips, as you pointed out, and it's and it's available to, to you guys as traders. You know, when you get, first get up, it's the, it's probably the best way when you get up in the morning. Or you know you you know if you, especially if you're in you know Europe or North America, you get up first thing in the morning and you take a look at Forex Analytics and you see what has been updated, and what has been you know what are, what are the new updates for you know for each particular pair and you know what what are they looking at, um, what's the team looking at? I mean it's it's it, it, it and it gives you something to think about too, because um, you, you're going to have your biases. I mean we all do. You know you you right. you can you can look at. You, like here, here's here's one thing. I mean, I, I'll tell you the euro dollar, the the close. We had a shooting star yesterday on on the euro. That did concern me. Now, it even though we've completely ignored that today, 
because of the comments from Mario Draghi. This was actually a concern of mine last night, and that's one of the reasons why I'm like, well, I'm I've got enough dollar shorts, you know, on the table. I don't know if I need to keep the euro on there too. Now, obviously, that was the wrong decision. I could have, if I would have kept the euro, I would have made a lot more money overnight. But it, it still, you know, gives you things to think about. Um, you know, when when you're trading, you're like, oh, oh, you know. Oh, the, the 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 you know the Kiwi just did you know we just we did uh, as you pointed out it's like oh you know we we rallied whoops that's the Aussie um, in the Kiwi we we cleared the uh, the the resistance here you know we cleared the resistance above seventy three twenty but it's already failing first thing in the morning yeah. and you, you know that was key resistance and you're like oh yeah you've you know. been you've been talking about that seventy three twenty and I know you like false breakouts because that was part of your premise about what was happening in a lot of pairs that like the Canadian did the same thing and look at what's happened to Canada in the last two weeks. So uh, that's why I brought up that, that Kiwi because 7320 uh, may have been a false breakout. Yeah, it is. And that, that actually provoked me today. Um, um, believe it or not, that provoked me to, uh, to short the New Zealand yen. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I actually shorted the New Zealand yen uh, nice. Near here, and uh, and and you know it's obviously it's very you know stretched on the daily you know RSI is very overbought. We're closing in on seven eight six retracement. I know the Kiwi dollar did a false breakout, and on top of that, the equity markets are really near support. So if the if the equity markets start to break lower, right. then the New Zealand yen is going to follow suit. But those are you know I Q off of knowing where all the majors are at. As well, and and so that's you know again I may have I may not be short the New Zealand dollar at this moment, but I'm short the Kiwi New Zealand or the Kiwi yen, excuse me, um, you know, as a result of uh, of everything that I've seen in the markets, and um, so so anyway, yeah, I, I think it's it's a uh, it's a um, uh, for anybody. The, you know, if you're paying the top tier for Forex Analytics, it's still less than ninety dollars a month, which is I, I don't know on a, per day. You know, yeah. what is that? Less than three bucks a day. It's less than a cup of coffee at your your local, you know, barista. You know, yeah. it's it, it's. Um, it, it, well, there's there's a testimonial from Lashawn and Jason. Yes, we do have instructional videos how to use it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, actually, if you're on Forex Analytics and you just look down below, there's video tutorials and a page guide. Video tutorials are very easy, you know, via you know YouTube. The page guide it gives you a a an, a, 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 a um, definition of everything that you see on the page. So if you're going, oh, okay, well, what's what what is that? What is what do these represent? And you know, I mean, you you have you know your your guides through here that explain everything that we're doing, um, you know, uh, everything about this whole entire page. And then on top of it, you have, uh, you, you have, um, you know, video tutorials too. It, it's not, and believe me, it is probably the most simple product to use. And we designed it that way because, because uh, of me, but because, because you know me, because we and have you know, I'm a dinosaur. So, we, <laughs> no, I mean re realistically, it's because it's a, it, it, if if you're going to have a difficult time navigating around it, I mean it's going to be, you know, the, how useful is that going to be to you? I mean this is this is supposed to be quick, quick, easy, easy use. You you glance and you go, okay, you know, the pound sideways. I can very easily say that. Oh my gosh, look at the dollar yen. It's bullish. You know, short term, long term, candlestick, harmonic, yeah. Elliott wave analysis. It's bullish. You know, but and and it's been that way for a couple of days. You know, oh, the dollar Canadian, Aussie dollar are showing some weakness here longer term. Uh, you know, you you have, you know, you have all of that. You know, in and we front of you. Oh, all of this in an hour uh, a day at, at our mm -hmm. webinar. We do our best to cover most of the things that are, you know, straightforward. But there's just too many instruments and too many methodologies to be able to cover it in an hour. In the last half hour, of course, it's usually an interview. Tough yeah. to do the coverage in an hour of FA. It, it is. And, and that's why, you know, D Dale, um, just so you guys know, I mean, Dale, Dale, you know, I mean, we get up early in the morning, D Dale and I. We work, we work 
West Coast hours. So we're up at, you know, before the sun is up, um, you know, at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. And I know for Dale, it's easy for him to leverage what he has here on Forex Analytics because then he can look at he can look at the charts and go, okay, hey, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. There was a recent update on the euro, and you know, I can I can talk about that this morning. And he, you know, he has something to discuss and yeah, trade. Probably. Yeah, and then right. and then and 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 but for for you know the daily webinars, which this right now we're going to spend a little bit of time just talking about kind of what we see for today, and 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 and. and and you guys can peruse Forex Analytics at your leisure and, and just try it, you know, and use it. I think you're going to enjoy it. Now, there's a couple things I do want to point out today. Um, uh, if you look at the S&P, the S&P, and, and I know I, I covered this in, the, in, the, in the, the week ahead video, but we are at what I would consider channel resistance on the yeah. S&P, okay? Yeah. Channel yeah. resistance. Um, we are the farthest distance away from the 200-day moving average on a monthly basis that, that we've been from the uh, financial or the uh, the tech the tech um, bubble previously, yeah. and yeah, I pointed true. that out, you know, the last few weeks. So you guys should have a very good indication of that. So we're 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 at what I consider very elevated levels. We're in June, which is typically not a very bullish time for the market anyway. You tend to you know, selling may go away, you know, May, June, July, the markets tend to be a little heavier, and then you come back for the fall and the markets start to rally again. So um, I'm very carefully watching, and, and I am short the S&P, just so you guys know. Uh, I'm oh, come on, some. congratulate me on the scale-in recommendation yesterday. Yeah, hey, you know, I, I didn't hear it, but listen, <laughs> I scaled in yesterday, so I'm, we're right. on the same page. That's awesome. Right. But But... You know the thing about the thing about the S and P is, and and I and 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 every trader that I know, major trader is looking at this right here, at this yeah. this uh, twenty four thirty uh, on the yeah. on the futures. It's actually twenty four twenty eight. Um, yeah. If we break through there, I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, short S and P, short um, the uh, just risk in general. Um, also, if you look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ actually looks particularly weak, yes, and, sure does. and and it's it's trading really heavy. So if, if there's any and if they're going to shoot the generals right now, they're 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 taking out the Amazons, the Apples, the Netflixes of the world. So keep an eye on those. Um, and if the NASDAQ starts to roll over, I think that could drag the S&P down. Now, we're seeing rotation still. Uh, we're seeing rotation yeah. into um, the Russell. So as, you know, they, they buy NASDAQ or sell NASDAQ, they're buying the Russell. But I think you got to watch for all the indices to really turn turn over. And here's the Dow. The Dow is like kind of hovering around the S&P. Um, and, and just keep an eye on these equities because if they come down, okay, uh, like I, you know, I'm I'm short the New Zealand yen, but I'm not opposed to buying more yen. Um, now, you know, like I said, I'm short some New Zealand yen here, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be opposed to um, selling some like maybe some uh, excuse me some ASEAN like you got this little false breakout yeah. right here. Yeah. Now I also um, tweeted about it. And I use the Forex Analytics account to tweet this this morning. This is the Euro Yen. Now I know the Euro Yen has rallied, and everybody's like, "Man, the Euro Yen's and it is strong." Um, and we did break this recent, you know, what is that two month range? Okay. Yeah. But if you look back at 2015, that was also the spike low back in 2015. Right here, the low was 126.09. We're basically at well, we're at 126.30 right now. But when you're looking at weekly support and resistance levels, you you have to give or take 50 pips. I mean, you can't you can't say oh, it just you know it broke it by 10 pips, so I'm going long. You can, you can't do that. It's it's this is support and resistance levels are zones. They're areas, That's right. not necessarily zone, you know. Yeah, a zone's got to be yeah. at least you know that much. Maybe even yeah. Not. I mean, I maybe, maybe. I, I and I always tell people, Dale, 
technical analysis is not an exact science. If it was an exact science, we would be gazillionaires, but it's not. It's not an exact science. They're all approximations. So when you get to an area or a zone, that's just where you have to be careful. And, and, and the reason why I point out the Euro Yen in particular is because near term, it looks like we're breaking out. You know, like near term, you go, oh, man, we haven't been up here, you know, in a month and a half. So everybody's getting squeezed out of here. Right. But how about if we turn and we close the day below 126? And we're yeah. at 126.27. That means it's going to end up being a false breakout, reversal at a key uh, re resistance, and then it'd be a good short. Now, look, I don't know how the dollar is going to react if we have some risk off. I, I don't know that. I don't have an answer for you guys. I wish I did. I wish I could say definitively, if stocks come down, the dollar will firm, gold will firm, Bonds will firm, yields will drop. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, because we we haven't seen it enough. We don't have any concrete evidence to say, okay, well, you know, if the stock market comes down, this, this, and this is going to happen. That's you know usually what happens during risk off. I've seen the dollar go down. I've seen the dollar go up, and I and so the correlations there are really unclear. But what could happen is we could see yen strength which would mean that the dollar yen goes down. We also right. could see dollar strength if right. there's risk aversion, which would mean the euro dollar, you know, re rejects this major resistance, which is at 113. We, we reject resistance here and it goes down. And then that means the euro down, euro yen goes down double time. So, uh, but I don't know. I don't have an answer and I don't, I don't know because we haven't seen enough evidence of what the market's going to do under those circum circumstances because we haven't been in that situation forever. I do know one thing that I did I did do is I picked up a little bit of U.S. dollar Mexican peso this morning. Well, that's um, a nice looking divergence pattern there. It looks yeah. like the bottom of a wedge plate. That's it really nice. Yeah. Yeah, because look at look at how and and I think Steve, if I'm not mistaken, Steve has been pointing this out. I, I have to go. I have to ask him. Um, if he's been looking at something that looks like this. Good morning, uh, Lake. Good morning, Dave. Dave. You know, I never knew how good Volge was until I joined you guys. I mean, he is really a top-rate technician. I, mean, you, I know you're saying that because he's now live on. Well, yeah. no. It's, 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 you, it's you know, you know. It was see, you, you see what happens here, Steve? He, you know what he's happens? Just, he's just All trying right. to, to, to call bribe us. Call me a shill if you want, but people that uh, know me, know that I speak my mind, you know, and uh, I've interviewed over 700 traders, so I can tell, and after watching his analysis for almost three months now, um, I don't like to be on the other side of uh, what Steve is thinking. I'm not going to no, do Steve, it anymore. Steve, Steve, Steve's a really, really talented technician, and, uh, but, so Steve, good morning. Um, were you I looking would have at this? I would have posted you in my Simon House regardless, uh, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. <laughs> but take a so, look at this so case. Of, like we, we, we cracked some support. Relative strength is divergent. You can see how you know relative strength did not follow price down. Okay, here let me right. let me let me do this. Um, so we have this, you know possible descending wedge, really divergent, and then on top of that, here, let me show you this, on top of that, and, and now you guys get to see something a little, uh, hold on, let me see here, um, let, me, let me grab it this way, this will be easier. So now you guys can see, let me just grab it really fast. Okay, so here's the DSI, and take a look at the pesos DSI, which yeah. is at 83, which is a, a very, very high reading, which is a contrarian indicator, because that means the Mexican peso, it's too bullish. Once it gets above 80, you know, you got to be a little careful about being too bullish, because then the chances of a snapback are high. So in that in that particular case, it, it, that means that the peso would actually weaken, 
And right. it, and again, if we get risk off, emerging market currencies tend to get hit. So if you go, you know, U.S. dollar, Mexican peso, U.S. dollar, South African rand, um, okay. you know, it's it's spiking up. You can you can go, uh, you know, I, I think I have a couple of other, you know, you you can look at the Turkish lira. Um, and Steve pointed you know, out the ruble uh, last week too. God, I haven't looked at this thing in forever. Yeah, most people can't trade the ruble. Um, mo most retail traders can't. So I'm trying to point out some things that you can. Okay. But like, right. look at this. Like the look the 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 lira. I mean, shoot, this thing. I mean, Turkey's got all sorts of issues. I'm sure. Gre I'm sure the Greek Steve would agree with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, Steve. Uh, but yeah, yeah, agree. yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, look at look at the lira right off the 200-day moving average. That that may not be a bad trade. Hell, I might actually buy that right now. I haven't traded the Turkish lira in a while, but look at this thing. I mean, this 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 thing looks uh, looks like it could. I mean, if we go risk off, you know, those are the types of things that you got to be looking at, right? Right. So, so anyway, okay. um, here I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna post that on Twitter because I gotta go anyway. Um, okay, bro. But uh, but Steve, how how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually here with uh, both Velo and Andreas. We're actually also streaming live on YouTube at the moment. Oh well, and we're streaming live on YouTube. I hear we're on Periscope. Um, I, I hear uh, Nick is trying to get us on Facebook Live this morning. We got all sorts of uh, all sorts of. Uh, uh, mediums that you guys can listen to this uh, to this broadcast. Very, yeah, I'm going to get us on CNBC uh, tomorrow. <laughs> well, tell, 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 tell all those what gentlemen. Tell, tell all those gentlemen. I said hello, and I'm going to I'm going to let you guys I'm going to let you guys uh, go from here. Okay, right, we've got Craig Erlum later, Blake, just in case you have time. What's He's, that? Uh, Craig Erlum. He's a market strategist for Oanda and Market Pulse. Oh Should wow! Be a great interview. Wow, that's yeah. going to be a great one. All right, well, you guys have fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to listen into that then. All right, Steve, it's okay, coming Blake. over. Enjoy the market open. Bye bye. Thanks. All right, Bye. so Luke is saying, uh, Steve, that uh, Draghi put in the high in the boom market. He shorted it, shorted it here. And, okay, uh, let's let's have a look at it. By the way, here here is the use the rubble. The reason I'm showing. It is the reason I had it up actually is because you mentioned it, yeah. And because because I because I thought that okay, uh, okay. How change. come retail traders can't trade it? Most uh, FX no, brokers he, he don't. Means, he, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blake means that uh, there are a lot of brokers that are actually not offering it. Um, okay. So um, so I actually uh, I actually think that this test here was an excellent opportunity for whoever wasn't long. If you remember. I had already yeah. been pointed that a long time ago when we were actually testing yeah. the first wedge, then we got the second one, when, then we got acceleration. And I think that the rebound we're getting from this zone is also very interesting. So, um, you know, th this was an evening star formation here. So, you know, that obviously uh, stalled the uptrend here, this one. But, but, on the, but on the other hand, I think that this thing remains uh, construct constructive. Uh, yeah, so yes, yeah, uh, retest of a breakout, classic. Yes, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, so I think it was very clean. Uh, Blake just showed the USDTRY. I think that plenty, plenty of the uh, more exotic pairs have provided us with some, uh, you know, some good opportunities in uh, in, a, in a rather slow market. Otherwise, uh, so uh, let's have a look at the boons for our good friend here, okay. and. Luca, yes, and here's the situation yeah. with the boon. Actually, actually, this is a very nice rejection. To be honest, I had started thinking that the boon is going to is going to form a triangle of some kind because we we had already seen, you know, a high here, then a low, then a lower high. So there were two options here: either a rejection of this trend line. Which you know we we like kind of oscillated around it, but we, you remember that I had pinpointed that we also had yeah. the equality target of the first leg higher here with the second leg higher. So we had confluence yeah. of um, and the one one twenty seven point two of this move lower. So you know around these levels here we had a triple confluence. To be honest, after seeing this move, I was uh, mostly thinking that um, uh, there is a good chance that we're going to see one more high towards the 166.20 area, which is, you know, this high and this high, 
but today's move is quite decisive and as it seems that we will be breaking below uh, this low uh, that takes um, the triangle um, um, explanation out of the window, uh, the triangle theory. So now it's important to see what exactly we're going to do uh, testing this zone, which is just a little bit lower, which was also the previous high and the low here. So for me to turn uh, really bearish this uh, and to, to then consider that perhaps what we're going to see is another move like this towards at least a test of this like wide triangle um, is, is to see uh, how we're going to respond to the zone. Because if we get rejected from the zone, if we rebound from it, then I will expect that uh, th uh, this confluence of resistances is, is not going to actually hold for a third time. Then I'm going to expect, so uh, if we see something like, uh, if we see a, like a rejection from here, then I would expect a move like this. So, you know, th this is a critical zone in my mind. Yeah, I, I kind of like the confluence of your moving averages and the next zone underneath. Yeah, yes, 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 about, yes. So. This is going to be the first support if we penetrate below that. I mean, let me let me be clear. If we okay. break this zone, I I think it's, it's, it's a, you know, it's 90% sure that we're going to at least test this confluence, at least. And we see what happens from there, you know what I mean? Yes. But I think, but I think a break lower from here will definitely, definitely at least give us a test of this soon. Yeah, Luke because is a is good, very good. He has a great eye. You know, we're getting also a couple of questions here on Euro Kiwi uh, from both Jack and Yasser. Uh, this is his first time to uh, be here. Oh, welcome, welcome to our community, Yasser. Uh, our mission here is to build up and edify traders every day, and uh, we hope to accomplish that every day. So welcome to our community. So okay. he's talking about Euro, maybe a, Eurozy. Yeah, Euro Euro outside, outside, uh, long okay. outside white candle. I yeah. mean, th this is a very bullish signal. So this actually confirms uh, the break of, um, of of the descending wedge, and uh, that's quite yeah, clear. And, and Euro Kiwi, yeah. even more decisive because look at this. This is, not, this is yeah. not just an outside reversal day. What do you uh, call it? This is a key reversal. Okay, key, it, I was taught that keys only happen at uh, contract highs and lows. But you, you call it a key it, because it, it takes yeah, off a, the previous week's range in one day? It, it, no, it's a key reversal because it registers a fresh uh, multi-week low. Okay. And then reverses and closes higher and actually not only that if if we close somewhere here we will also engulf one two three four five six seven eight days of previous price action so this is almost two weeks huge candle in combination with the descending you remember we had this conversation yesterday and I said listen I, I believe that this pair is going to reverse somewhere be between here and this level, the 61.8, but I don't know yet when, and I need a trigger. So this is the trigger. It's, I mean, can, it can't get more obvious than that, can it? No. Yes. No. It, it no. even tested, not only it gave us a key reversal, but first it actually tested the 200 DMA and got spectacularly re rejected out of it. Yeah, so a and, lot of people are going to say, oh, I'm late. Okay, this is a typical trader reaction. You know, I didn't buy it under 153, and now it's like almost 55. Oh, I missed this trade. So uh, really, today is just the first signal. Okay, you had some. If you, uh, if you get lucky and you get a retest of 154. 54. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a retest of 154 is going to be, you know, uh, in a sense, godsend. Of course, I'm not telling you what to do. Everybody takes their own decisions. But right. personally, personally, uh, personally, I'm already long the euros since last week, and I was actually, you know, uh, I was like, uh, you yeah, know, probably it's not, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. But personally, I'm going to get involved with Euro Kiwi like yesterday. I mean, in the sense, the first opportunity it gives me. Now I have all the elements I need to be long, and if I'm wrong, I'm I'm still going to be happy. Why? Because I will have followed a plan. And when you follow a plan, you you know you make money more times than you lose money, and that's 
the only thing you can hope for as a trader. There's nothing else. There is nothing else you can influence besides having a plan that you know it works, following it, and knowing that statistics, I mean, repeating the same process over and over again, is going to be in your favor. That's it. Nice old buddy. Anything else uh, that people uh, uh, yes. have their eye I, on? I, I will tell like... you something else because it's related to that. My view in EuroKiwi is also connected to this. Do you remember how many times I repeated what I expect from Kiwi? Yeah, I, yeah you said yeah you you said you thought that it would peak within the next uh, hundred pips. Yes, and not only that, I was saying it while we were still in the triangle. I I took profits on my short because this is a triangle. Triangles are fourth waves. They bring one more thrust higher. I expect that thrust higher. I expect that we will reverse before reaching this high. And, um, and you know, then I want to be short and we see what happens from there. Unfortunately, I'm not short because, because I had an order to go short at 73.50 and that order wasn't triggered for like a few pips. But, yeah. you know, that was part of the plan. Okay, this, yeah. <laughs> this time, yeah. looks you know. Like, this, yeah, look, that falls straight. It looks like a stop punt to me over the 320. You can so, call it as it is. Know. I call it a fifth wave. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Well, right. But you made the yeah. point. I brought it up the other day that wave four triangles are uh, followed up by a, a terminal thrust. And you said, yes. well, it's terminal just for this wave. And that may be yes. not longer. Term, but just That's very correct, wave. as you said. Because if I see now a three wave correction, I, I will actually consider being long the, uh, the Kiwi for, uh, for okay. the medium term, yes, for sure. But do I believe nice that? Words, Steve. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and we also had the RSI divergence. We had a very clean yeah. uh, five-wave move up. I mean, this was a textbook a case that shorts that were, had been built here would be taken out, and then we would reverse, because that would be a terminal uh, thrust. Of course, it's too early to celebrate. First of all, for me, there is no celebration, because for, like, what is it? three, four pips, I'm not even involved in it, but it doesn't matter, you know, I had the plan to be short there, it didn't happen, okay, fine. Uh, but as the day is moving for the time being, this is going to be a very ugly candle, because this, if we, for example, if we close below 72, 70 roughly, this is also going to be a key reversal, first of all. But even if we close as we are at the moment, this is a gravestone uh, doji, so that's not a bullish candle as well, not, not by any means. Okay, uh, okay I think now we covered, you know, um, Kiwi on and uh, Euro Kiwi uh, quite extensively. So, what do our friends want to see? Uh, How about uh, looking at the pound crosses here? Um, sure, see of course. Happening Why not? Euro Let's see what we have here. Trump First of all, cable, 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 cable. I think Blake has has been very adamant about it. I'm of the same opinion as well. I don't want to be involved with cable. I, I believe that we would be rejected from here. We did. I believe that we would retest roughly these levels. We actually did. But I don't like being long. I mean, too much risk there. Too many things can happen. Um, and 128 is a very strong level. So I didn't like the risk reward of being long here because there was limited upside. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be long at 128 because I really want to see what's going to happen from there. And with the political risk and the Brexit negotiations that have started, anything can happen at any at any given point, and we we, we might have some piece of news that will uh, you, know, you know that we, that will yield a, you know 150 200 pip plants. So I'd rather be involved you know with other pairs. But pound crosses, on the other hand, although they do carry some of the risk, I think they're technically more clean. So um, we are seeing once again. What we were get, uh, saying about pound dozy, we've held this zone. Perhaps actually, hmm, this is interesting. Yeah. Let's have a look at this. This this needs a little bit of exploring because I I see here. Yep, I do see it. I was right. It's not pretty, but this is a head and shoulders formation, an inverted one. Yes, it is. So we are currently, uh, you know, not much to say about that. Obviously, we can measure the target, a first target, and then I'm going to go back to the daily because, you know, it, it's it's actually more interesting. Probably um, back to your moving average up there. So we have 
17060, roughly here. Let's go back to the daily and 176 and see what we get there. 176, and what do you know? It's actually at the bottom of this zone. So currently we're testing at lev a level that should at least, if right. broken, give us a rebound to this zone. That's a nice trade. Yep. Uh, so Pound Ozzy has actually started being actionable. I mean, we, we are currently testing this level. Pound Kiwi, do you remember that we had seen it? Look at this. What do we have here? Yeah. We have a wedge. What did we get today? A perfect Remember test. I said I think we needed one more drive. Yes, it, that, that it was it. Picture. Here it there's is. Your, one more drive, drive, one more test of the support of the wedge. And yeah. another Boom. key reversal in this pair as well. Yeah. And we're currently going on today. testing. Yes, a lot going on today. So he, this is almost actionable as well. Ah, also, let's not forget. We actually tested today with a fresh low to the pip, also the ABC. You see it here? Yeah. I didn't draw it now. There, it was here. You see it? ABC. Yeah. And there we go. So we tested the wedge support. We also tested the equality target. And we're currently showing some very strong reversal. I like it. I'm actually going so, to get involved. Uh, don't tell me that turnaround Tuesdays is just an expression. Because look at all the reversals <laughs> we're getting on turnaround. No, we, we are getting a lot of reversals so, here. That's true. You know, I, I, you know, it was a good call in the S&Ps and not a great call in uh, Aussie yen. But, you know, uh, for the most part, I could pass on trading on Mondays because I'm a, I, I look to fade things. And I can't tell you how many times if you're just patient and wait till Tuesday or uh, Monday evening here in the States, look for Europe or Asia for the turn, that you get the reversals on that day. So, you know, like Monday and Fridays could be a non-trade day for me. You know very <clears> well <throat> that the last person that would disagree with you on being patient and taking the trades that clearly need to be taken, the last person that's going to argue against it is me. <laughs> yes. You know that very well. I know that. So, you know, <clears throat> for people that are new to the industry, it's an old-timer expression, turn around Tuesday, but write it down. And if you're looking for reversals in markets, try and be patient until that day or the evening before Tuesday. Uh, I see a friend mentioning it here because it was the last message, uh, so I, I don't want to bypass, uh, you know, whatever I'll, uh, others have said, but it was something I wanted to show anyhow. So let's go to yeah. USD card. I yeah. mean, uh, we, we, won, <laughs> we warned multiple times, multiple times, yeah. that USD card was technically extremely clean. We warned here at this flag and we weren't again yeah. here we're breaking down from this as well I mean and there's uh, a there's a false breakout uh, example that's textbook um, yes. when we went above 136 next time back down under 136 if you just waited for that breakout to be negated and went with a failed breakout you know what you never had any heat any drawdowns um, maybe you were break even for a few days but uh, here's another lesson for traders that sometimes the best trades are failed breakouts. So be aware and say, well, it's uh, the breakout is negated. I'm not going to, I'm glad I didn't buy it. Try and think of how many people did, how many people are trapped, and how many people are going to have to be liquidated out that went with the trade. Especially like big time investors that were receiving. Uh, one bank um, analysis after the other, giving, I mean, that, that was one of my triggers for sorting it up there at the top, USD card. I was receiving, yeah. like, tons of analysis, uh, you know, with insane targets of, of USD card, and they were like, yeah, yeah, okay, we've seen that before. Like the well, remember we talked, and we talked about the positioning. The positioning, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had record shorts in, uh, in Canada. You know, people looking for the 150 level. So uh, there, I think that anyone that's been in face uh, did not get ca caught long USD kid. Oh, for you know, sure. And that I was mean, with the crude declining. Remember I said that might be the hook. A lot of people are going to buy 
Canada because of a weak crude market. Buy US and, and, and it's not and since matter. you mention it, and since you mention it, let's have a look at both crude and USD NOC. I'm still short the USD NOC. I would have been happy if it had moved more. You know, I, I sorted it up here, so I'm I have like a perfect positioning having to do my risk reward is non-existent in a sense. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that we're gonna see a retest of this confluence of zones. And if I see a break below there, then I'm gonna Oh know god that I I don't like yeah. to hear that word. Uh, you know and what I you want to hear pinkertism? Hope is the oxygen in our life and the carbon <laughs> monoxide in our trading. Because you know I've yeah, I've experienced carbon monoxide. Go but ahead. but I really believe that you're in the totally wrong profession. You should have been a poet or something. <laughs> I know. I, I, well, you know, I'm a broadcast. A I was, a, I was, you know, I was a broadcast journalism major. So uh, anyway, uh, something else. It, don't yeah. say I did. Don't say I didn't warn. I'm you showing did. you crude. All right, no, you did. Right, I told you, don't be short there. No matter what, don't be short 40 to 50. Don't. You know, one of the guys we interviewed that I brought in here, Kurt Spano, did a uh, webinar. You know, he's actually thinking, and I even got something from Adam Button to this extent. Uh, he's not, you know, he's not a trader trying to pinpoint the low in crude, but he's very bullish crude. Um, he's thinking there's going to be a war with Iran. And I think that Qatar, which is close to Iran, is one of the reasons why the Saudis have done what they've done and do believe that they're, you know, uh, Adam Button, who's not an alarmist at all, sent me a Skype the other day. He said, Dale, you know, I was thinking uh, that it's possible that the Saudis may attack Qatar. And, you know, Adam's very good with news and stuff. And you know, anytime, you know, I, I bring up apocalyptic stuff all the time. But that's not Adam Button. For him to say he thinks there, there could be a geopolitical event there, I, I responded to him. I said it makes sense because the real target isn't Qatar. The real target's Iran. And then Kirk Spanos uh, is talking about $100 oil because he thinks there's potential for a conflict with Iran. So anyway, uh, that's just some, you know. Okay, uh, let me give you a fast feedback on what I think. I'm not a specialist, right? Okay. Do I think that uh, having a conflict in the area again is likely, especially under the Trump administration? The answer is yes, it's quite likely. Do I think, on the other hand, that um, uh, crude at $100 again is likely? No, I don't, actually. I don't okay. Think. Even if there's uh, the Straits of Hormuz uh, become a war zone, any any price is possible in these markets. So I don't know if it, that's just his call. It, uh, it will have to be. It, it will have to be very uh, very serious conflict to even consider getting a rally up to there. Because now we're not dependent on only on those countries for uh, crude supply. You know what I mean? So. Uh, uh, 100 is very stretched. Could we definitely get a rally of 20, 25 dollars? Yes, there's no question about it. And that's okay. enough to make a, a lot of money, right? I mean, if we get, if if you get 100 on the other hand, it's an extra bonus. But uh, I think it's you know 100. I would say 70, 62, 70. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. That's a different story. Yes, yeah. yes, well, that for sure. You, know, you never know how rubber bands going to get stretched. Anyway, I just wanted to make our community aware that. Adam Button is a real rational guy who doesn't, you know, talk about, you know, uh, uh, you know, any kind of things to hype his analysis. Uh, sent me that Skype, and then <clears throat> Kirk is pretty good. You know, I don't know about his numbers, but he's forecasted some geo stuff before. That's why I brought him in here, and that's what he's saying. So, you know, uh, uh, what we do in here, Steve, is not just. Uh, you know, uh, it's creating awareness in our community so that they have some things in the back of their head to consider when they're trading. Because, you know, I'm not sure this is a bottom in crude. I actually would like to see one more low, take out the $40 bulls, and uh, something like 38 would be very attractive to me. So, um, sure, I'm just I should. And as long as we trade below 49, the instrument is still bearish. But the risk reward being short on this zone was like the worst you could get because I 
you remember I reiterated it plenty of times. I did believe that this zone will bring a rebound. Now, what kind of rebound is that going to be? We'll see. Might be shallow, in which case, for example, we might stall here, which is this low, or we might stall here at 45, uh, 30, 40, whatever it is, that we actually closed and opened that day there. And, and you know, it's, it's also probably, if I draw a fib, it's going to be like a 38.2. And it was those lows here as well. So it's not that I'm it's not that I'm outright bullish or long oil, but one thing I knew for sure is that some kind of rebound would come from here. Great so call, Steve. That was a very good call from a few days ago. I'm I'm just going to take a quick five minutes because uh, I see that Craig Earlham's in the house, and I I want to be prepared. So uh, for the interview in about nine minutes, Craig, stand by. Welcome to face Perfect. and I'm Steve. I'm going to be happy to. Go ahead. What's the interview? And until then, I, I, I see we have a lot of questions from yeah, friends. People asking about uh, the Swiss and, and people asking uh, Catherine first wanted of, to know about your all, view on CAD. But. Let's be fair. Let's let's have a look at what Luca has sent us having to do with his view in the Bund. Okay. This is what Luca sees. So, okay. So, it's a parallel channel. Uh, yeah. Th this is my, my second scenario, as I said, Luca. If we penetrate below that zone, that I showed, which is he roughly here. Let me let me actually draw it. Which is, uh, if we see it on, uh, if we see it on uh, your chart, it's uh, like somewhere here. Then I'm also expecting a deep uh, drop, and then we see what happens when we test this zone again. But I agree with you. Uh, I have one more zone here uh, that that I'm monitoring, as I said. But if if we actually fail to hold that zone then I'm totally with you. Then I, th I think that we're going to get uh, a much deeper uh, move down. And, um, of course, uh, that's, uh, that's going to um, also affect um, what happens with... Um, uh, I'm guessing that it's also going to affect what happens with uh, U.S. bonds. So um, we really need to have a look at those as well, now, now that we mentioned it. And let's have a look at ZDN, which is a 10-year... Uh, oops, sorry. We want to have a look at it here. That it actually has some technical analysis on it. Okay, this is a very, very bearish uh, move. This is then we had warned that you know this move higher might be terminal. Actually, Grega was the first one that had shown with his analysis that he believed that this is terminal. So uh, you know, kudos to him because he he saw it a lot earlier than we did. Sorry for the empty screen. I'm actually going to bring. Uh, Gregor's analysis in front so you can see it. Here it is. So what you see here from Gregor, this this chart here was posted a long time ago. A long time ago. Actually, you can see how long time ago he posted it by seeing in a blog post we wrote several weeks ago, he used this exact, exact uh, chart that he believed that um, uh, US 10-year bonds are, are about to reverse lower. And as it seems, today we're getting that thrust lower. Um, let me bring it back on. Okay, here we are. So uh, I think that a break below this confluence of the 200 and the 50 DMA is actually more or less going to confirm. Uh, but today's move and today's break, which is decisive after getting, look at how many indecision days we got. We got a spinning top. We got a pin bar, another pin bar, another spinning top. This is the market saying, you know, that, that, that it has no momentum to keep moving higher. And then today, boom, that's it. So I really think that this, this move is, is very significant, very significant. Um, and we really need to pay attention to it very closely and see what, what, what's actually going to bring. Uh, because, you know, plenty of things are correlated with uh, uh, treasuries, obviously. Um, anyhow, let's go back to what friends are asking, which is uh, the USDCHF, the Swissy. Uh, a friend here is saying, okay, let me show you what I'm seeing in Swissy to begin with. Okay, this was a trend line that was very important to me, and we never tested it the first time. But we seem that it, it seems that we, it's very likely that we will test it. Uh, I had said back then that the break below this trend line, that it was a multi-year trend line, was very, very important for the overall trend. 
we got a rebound of some kind. Uh, it, it was obviously corrective. It was an A, B, C. And today's move seems, you know, to, to, to be gaining momentum again. So I think that uh, we're going to see a test of this 0 0.96. And what happens from here is going to shape, you know, if we get another critical break of the USD uh, CHF lower. A friend is asking if it's a complex inverted head and shoulders. There is the chance that it is like uh, shoulder, head, shoulder, but already this candle is too big. I mean, for this possibility to remain alive, we would really need to see a reversal higher like ASAP, like an abrupt move uh, higher again, then testing somewhere here that we would have a neckline and then continuing. But at, uh, for the time being, this does not look like an inverse head and shoulders to me. This looks more likely to be uh, a small correction at the bearish trend and the continuation lower. So if you're going with the inverse head and shoulders scenario, be very careful. Obviously, you know where you're wrong. If we if we go below, what is it, 0, 96, 10, call it roughly. Uh, but I don't think the odds are, are in your favor here. Uh, just my personal point of view here. Um, another friend is asking about Euro pound. We have so many friends in here. Yeah, I think great to have a lot of friends. It is. It is actually. I think Euro pound has. Uh, th this was obviously a triangle. I mean, I had already put that in uh, in the chart, and um, it seems that we're going to have a fresh high. Now, what kind of a high that's going to be? Um, I, I think that we might soon see a reversal afterwards. So yes, we're breaking. I think Nick's talking, uh, Nick's talking 90, 89 uh, or so. I mean, we're not that far away, are we? No, we're not. We're not. So this looks like a fourth wave to me as well, without you know having looked at it in you know. Oh yeah. So something what, like what's that. A, what's the size of the formation? Uh, maybe that would give you a potential objective of the like triangle. Like one, two, three. Four, five, and what's if we the width do, of the triangle of four? How yeah, many if you, dips? If, if, if yeah, we do there. roughly what you suggested, there you that's go. What we get. You see? All right, beautiful. Yeah, there, there, so there's the magnet. There's the yeah. magnet, folks. Yeah, so it's roughly the psychological level of zero ninety, as you said. Yes. Thank you so much, Steve. Okay. Um, uh, are you ready for, to start the interview, mate? Uh, sure. Uh, let me make uh, Craig the presenter here. Great okay. analysis as uh, as usual, Steve. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, have I a really wonderful enjoy. Week. I really enjoy bantering with you every day about the markets and uh, same here. You, you know that. You two give you two give me an edge. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I should have listened to you on Aussie Kiwi, but. You know what? I don't mind being one for two in the market uh, because uh, even with the Aussie yen making new highs and it ended up being a stop hunt, I think, it still looks negative to me. Um, the S&Ps paid off to more than compensate that. And I, I would continue to sell rallies in the s we, we can't be We can't be right at all, right? I mean, no, nobody no, can. No. Uh, here's another poetic pinkertism, and this is for everyone. Don't expect perfection at the crap table. And with that being said, I'm going to bring on Craig. You're now the presenter. I'm looking forward to hearing your voice and seeing your screen. Everybody, welcome Craig Erlin. Welcome, Craig. Craig. Is, hey, Hi, Craig, how are you? Going? It's I'm so great good. to have you here. Uh, thank you so much for your time, uh, taking the time to address our community, Craig. You know, I usually have a great memory. You know, I can remember everyone's trades. We've done this before, haven't we? Didn't I interview you in Lara on FX Street? I think you did. I think that was uh, maybe two or three years ago now. Yeah, okay. So, you know, I because, I, you know, when I asked you to come on, I, I knew that we had had, uh, you know, I, I interviewed over 700 people. I was pretty sure we did this before, so... Welcome back to uh, dealing with me for another 20 minutes. I think after three <laughs> years, you've had time to recover from uh, your last interview with me, and I appreciate you coming back. So, uh, Craig, you're a market strategist uh, for Oanda and Market Pulse, so uh, you're very well followed. Uh, we're having the dollar under 
extreme pressure with uh, Draghi's statement. So uh, I'm very interested with uh, what you have on your radar screen. Yeah, sure. Firstly, uh, thanks for having me back on. Uh, if you've interviewed over 700 people, uh, I appreciate you actually remembering me. Uh, that's, uh, that's a lot more people than I can ever remember. Um, yeah, uh, I think I think this week's going to be quite interesting. I think ultimately the summer uh, could be a little bit challenging for the markets, but this week we do have a number of central bankers speaking, so uh, fortunately we do have that on the radar, and for a brief period at least we can stop talking about all the problems in the UK and start uh, looking a little bit beyond uh, the political uh, circus which we have going on here. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, I think the euro is looking really interesting right now. We uh, we looked as though we were seeing it looking a little bit toppy uh, approaching those 113s, the 113s uh, just being those previous highs, 113, 113, right. uh, 50. We had that yeah, lovely that breakout. The, that was the high on... Uh, Election day, so they finally, yeah. uh, well, almost accomplished it. Yeah, and it was this. It was this. Is this interesting rejection which just made it just start to look that little bit toppy? We saw it flatten off a little bit. We saw the momentum. Uh, as shown by the MACD and stochastic below, starting to fall out the move. It's always a surefire sign that things are starting uh, to potentially look in uh, look at potential correction uh, territory. Um, it looked as though we were potentially even going to see that. We saw the break briefly below the channel, but it didn't really gather any momentum to the downside. So I think it was really these 111s which was looking um, particularly key. But then you look today, and when we see these strong rallies on the back of, let's face it, very relatively little, um, it's always a surefire sign that the market is desperate to be bullish. I was hoping, if I'm honest, uh, I was hoping for more of a correction. I was hoping for a move back to at least a 38.2 fib, maybe the 50 just to offer some uh, really attractive levels uh, but the market is clearly very keen to be bullish and if we can see a breakthrough these kind of 113s then it looks like the market's ready for another wave higher and 113.50 like I say offers a little bit of another test but really if we break through these 113s I see no reason why we can't be looking back towards these kind of 115, 116 levels and I don't think we'll have to wait too long but like I said I think what I would like to see rather than what I am expecting Thing to see is a bit of a healthy correction here because it's been a very aggressive rally and we haven't had uh, that healthy correction which I think is always warranted and that looking which, back kind of, which means that maybe we're close because retail traders are very long the euro and uh, Absolutely. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they're never right because you know what we're retail traders <laughs> this <laughs> flash <laughs> anyway, so you know, we're always saying, "Oh, the retail trader is too long," but you know, who are we? Uh, I'm not. I, I've been in an institution, but I'm not an institution. So uh, maybe we're getting close here, Craig, to where that type of shakeout could occur, because if the Dixie doesn't turn here, uh, it could turn into you know kind of a bloodbath. So uh, maybe we're getting close. Maybe a peg it with a high uh, possibly in euro pound up around 90 uh, because you know I, I teach as long as euro pound is bullish your preferred long is the euro and your preferred short is a pound and we're not quite there but we're getting close. Do you have a view yeah, on euro pound? Um, well, yeah, I mean, just to g briefly go back one second, um, I think I completely agree with what you're saying there. And looking at the uh, chart which you which you uh, had on your screen about uh, about five or ten minutes ago, the uh, the U.S. Treasury, maybe that is a signal that we are going to see a little bit more dollar strength, and that hopefully the two moves can coincide. Because I think and a healthy correction in the dollar wouldn't do any it wouldn't do the markets any harm whatsoever. And to an extent, I think it's it would be quite welcome. So I think the markets are underestimating. Uh, the Fed, at least for this year, the, the the idea that we won't see another rate hike this year seems a little bit far fetched to me, considering they are clearly uh, determined to do one more. Uh, Euro pound again. I mean, since, complete since agreement. you bring it up, though, Craig, um, and I know that you know you have uh, an economic background that you're not just a technician. You you think about the fundamentals. You know, the data hasn't been that strong in the U.S. Why do you think the Fed is in a tightening mode and may continue to be aggressive? What's, their re what's the reason? I think there's a number of factors. I think, for one, the Fed's not in a tightening mode, but it's also in no mood. Uh, sorry, it's not, the, the, the data doesn't support necessarily uh, tightening per se. 
Um, but I think the Fed's in no mood to fall behind the curve. And I think they're looking at the models and they're seeing unemployment's very low. And I think what they're looking at is the potential for inflation to pick up and they're desperate not to fall behind the curve. I think that's one thing that they've made perfectly clear. I think uh, another thing as well, I think they're looking at the cyclical aspect uh, of the economy and they're saying, right, we're now, what, about nine years into this current cycle. I think this is the third longest um, yeah. growth cycle that we've uh, ever seen in the US and it's far right. longer than the average already. And I think they're looking at this and they're saying, we are in a position right now when, yes, maybe the data doesn't justify it. And if we were in the third year or fourth year of this cycle, then, yeah, we'd probably hold off a little bit longer and we could we could enable ourselves to take this uh, little bit of more of a risk. But we're not. We're in the ninth year of this cycle. Um, and we need to prepare for the scenario whereby if we do see another downturn and we see another recession, we've got some decent tools in our kit that we can uh, that we can, uh, we can use in order to uh, offset it, and uh, I think things, and, and I think that they're, they're also looking at the data saying, yeah, it's not great, but it's not bad either. We can afford to raise interest rates without damaging the economy, and I think that's what that, that's why they're so uh, also, intent on doing also so. The 2400 S and P, but you know what, I I, you know, I wanted to hear your answer because you know that confirms uh, that's my belief is that um, they're worried about not inflation, but the next recession and they want to have a cushion so they could take rates back down if they need to. So uh, thank you very much for your insights on that. Uh, are you based in the UK? Yeah, London. Okay, then what do we do with cable here, Craig? You're there, you should know. I'm in San Diego. What what, what would I know about the cable? You know? So yeah, c cable again, it's an interesting one because what, in one in one way, I, I think we are at, at these kind of levels. I think we're very oversold. I think the market is heavily priced in a hard Brexit. I think yes. there's been too much attention paid to the rhetoric, to the political posturing, which we've seen from both the EU and the UK over the last uh, six to 12 months. Uh, and I think there's almost this case where we're fearing the worst. And I don't think the worst is going to happen. Yes, both sides have to um, have to play a strong game and have to sell to their own electorate but the reality I think is there is going to be some form of compromise I don't think I think the UK will probably be a little bit worse off than it would have been inside the EU but that doesn't mean we're all of a sudden going bankrupt either and I think when we're looking at the levels that cables at currently I think we're pricing in far too deep a downturn I think we're, too, we're pricing in far too hard a Brexit so we may languish around these levels for a little bit longer but if you're talking 12 months down the line 18 months down the line I'm not looking anywhere below these kind of 120s to 125s. I'm looking back towards hopefully around the 135s to 140s. And um, and I think we could even potentially go a little bit above that when we soon realize that there's going to be a transition deal. This is going to be a much longer process. And if the transition deal is two to five years, then that's two to five years when our economy is hopefully going to have more certainty and um, and stronger levels of growth. And hopefully we don't hit a recession in that time. But there's little signs at the moment that we are uh, going to so I, I think we are languishing around the lows there's no reason why we can't stay here for longer though I think you look at this yeah. right now we're stuck between these kind of 126 as 128 we could pop, pop, pop high I, I would kind of try it I would try it down there if it, uh, we got some bad news and we just went down one more time under 126 I would try it there you know uh, you're uh, I think you make some great points how about this Greg you know I was taught um, and you know I've been around for a while that what happens in the UK leads what happens in the US. Like to me, the FTSE looks weaker than the S&P, so it looks like it could lead the correction to the downside. And if we're in a tightening mode, this is probably the first time uh, in my career that I've seen the US ahead of uh, the UK in any kind of cycle, easing or tightening. Perhaps what finally takes a pound up, Carney's pretty slick, uh, what would it take for him to stop sounding like a dove? And do you think he could flip and uh, start talking about uh, being a little more hawkish and possibly a rate increase is the last thing anyone's looking for in the UK in the face of Brexit? Well, I think I think the first first and foremost, I think before we hit the possibility where Mark Carney turns more hawkish, and I do obviously think that's a possibility, I think that we've got to face the prospect that Mark Carney is not going to have the influence over the Bank of England that 
past governors will. We saw the vote of five to three, and of course that included Kristen Forbes, who leaves the Bank of England at the end of this month. But it shows that people are willing to go against Mark Carney. Um, we heard Andy Haldane, who's uh, one of his um, closer uh, colleagues, and he also came out only 24 hours after Carney last week um, and said that while he didn't vote for a rate hike previously, the way the numbers are going, he would consider doing so at one of the future meetings. So he's there not driving the consensus that governors previously do. So I think that's the highest possibility. Is that okay, so he may cave. He may cave because he's not uh, leading the central bank like Yellen is. So it's I a think, little different I think situation. He may, I, I'm not sure he'll cave. I almost think he will go down swinging. He will be one of the losing voters and okay. other policymakers will will move against him. Um, I think the thing that will make him cave would be uh, not just higher inflation. I think inflation would have to hit closer to 3.5% than 3% for him to start considering the idea that their analysis is incorrect. I think things like inflation expectations are the ones that we should be keeping a close eye on because this is something he refers to repeatedly. And if inflation expectations keep rising, then that could be the type of thing that makes him think that this is more than just a currency inflicted inflation move and that the consumer behavior is being influenced by it, which will ultimately uh, feed re- back into how those. How about real estate prices, Craig? Are, are they still on fire there? In the UK, they've cooled. They've, cooled. they've certainly cooled, uh, particularly in London. Not as much as Carney would like. I think in the financial stability report earlier on, actually, he did refer to house prices and in parts uh, that they are still uh, a little bit high. Uh, no, it was interesting earlier that they re- they increased the uh, counter cyclical buffer uh, as well from zero percent to zero point five percent and indicated a willingness to increase it to 1% in November. This seems to have um, bypassed a lot of people, but the counter-cyclical buffer, is, I believe, it was what was cut back in August along with interest rates in order to try and free up some extra um, extra stimulus in the economy. Um, and that's what they've done today. They've increased the buffer. Now, that I was very curious to see how the pound was going to trade today simply because if they are increasing that buffer, is that a compromise on behalf of Carney that says, nice. I don't think we're ready for higher interest rates yet, but what I will do is I'll increase that buffer again. I'll undo that move that we did back in August. An effective slight tightening, but maybe that's the compromise which they've come to in order to appease some of the more hawkish policymakers, and that buys him an extra three to six months uh, on the inflation side. So I'll be very interested to see how the pound trades in the That's coming. a great insight. I'm glad I asked you about the real estate market. I didn't know that was going on. So they have more tools than just uh, raising uh, funds rate. So uh, that may be a tool that uh, that's interesting that you bring that up. So why don't I ask you a question that no one can answer? Uh, (laughs) What's going on with the yen, Greg? Uh, U.S. dollar yen, I mean, we've had false breakouts, uh, breakouts over trend lines, and it fails. Here we are again, breaking out again to the upside. Um, and it's doing it in the face of a pretty weak dollar. So uh, what are you thinking in here? And I see you have some cloud patterns on here, et cetera. Uh, that hasn't done anything wrong yet. But that's all I could say. Now, the yen has been, um, I, I find it one of the most frustrating currencies, to be quite honest, because fundamentally yeah. there seems to be very little reason to be long the yen. It seems to be the only central bank that isn't even pondering the idea of uh, tightening policy or removing any form of accommodation. The economy is showing very gradual improvement, but very little at the, not, 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 nothing substantial anyway. We're not in a majorly risk averse environment, which would typically benefit the currency. And yet it seems to be performing quite well uh, anyway. Um, I think what we're actually seeing quite an interesting move in dollar yen right now. And again, hopefully this is something that's coinciding with the analysis on the US Treasury earlier on. Of course, if U.S. Treasury prices fall, that means yields rise, and that right. would typically be beneficial for the dollar. And what we're seeing right now is, as of literally today, we're seeing the yeah. price action breaking above the cloud here, which would be typically tape it, take yeah. it into bullish territory, but which is a little more rare. We're seeing the uh, lagging line, which is the confirmation line, also breaking above the cloud at exactly the same time. So should we see a nice little break here up through that 112, then I think this could be a very, very bullish signal uh, for dollar yen and could coincide nicely with the uh, treasury uh, position that we were, that you were talking about earlier. And should we see a break above here, 
then I think we could maybe be looking back towards these kind of 114s, 115s, and this is then a very interesting zone once again. I think longer term, we are still kind of, we're just range bound really in dolly yen at yeah. the minute. It seems to be since the start of the year really, there doesn't seem to be a, a broad consensus on where this pair's headed for now. We've got a nice big range, but I mean, you just look at these lines here, and it's very just side sideways bound. So I think a big test would come around these 114s, 115s. But hopefully, at least uh, in the shorter term, short to medium term, we could be seeing a very nice little bullish breakout right now. Okay, thank you for that and a nice view. Uh, I'd like to get your comment on what happened in the precious metal pit yesterday. You know, my my handle is at forex stop hunter, so you know I'm all for it. Uh, when I was on the floor, you'd hear roar on the floor every time they ran stops. I noticed that after the stops were run, uh, people would sell in to buy stops, buy in to sell stops, and they were at least temporary highs and lows maybe for the session. But yesterday, what happened in the precious metals, uh, you know, kind of stinks for traders because uh, the way it was, uh, uh, the way it happened all in one minute, um, if you if you ever want to see a stop on that was pretty classic yesterday in uh, the silver and gold. Uh, what do you think is going on with the structure of the market for? Uh, you know, we were they're saying fat fingers. I mean, we had a fat finger in uh, Amazon a few weeks ago. We we're having these fat finger events everywhere. I don't know if they're fat fingers, but uh, what's your view on that? And then the commodity currencies in light of it. Okay, so I mean, the, the, this is the gold move you're talking about, just to bring another chart in. Yeah. So this is the sell-off which we saw. There's one reason why I find it hard at the moment to buy overly into the fat finger uh, idea is simply because we did retrace some of the gains, but it took a long time to retrace those gains. Usually in these fat finger scenarios, the, the, the moves are um, reversed quite rapidly. Um, that's a pearl, I'm, Craig. That's a pearl, okay, because that's something that I'm going to be thinking next time is how quick is the recovery off some type of spiking event. Uh, so, you know, that I, I talk about it's not just the price, but how it gets there. So that mm -hmm. that's pretty insightful to watch if it's a struggle after an event for a market to recover. Beautiful. Exactly. Um, so we we saw that we saw the big move, and of course it seems like it's it, the, the the speculation was that it's come from a very large trade in very liquid environments. Something that we've got to become accustomed to, I think, because there's a number of factors at play here. One, we keep seeing these large trades in the liquid environments. The pound has been one of the biggest victims of this since last year's uh, Brexit vote. We've seen two or three occasions where the pound has moved in a significant a significant amount of very short period of time because of uh, large trades in illiquid. Uh, trading. What that does is it triggers two things. It triggers the stop losses. You say yourself, you stop loss hunter. You know, you know that it's going to trigger a wave of stop losses, which is going to exacerbate the move much further. So you will always see some form of correction uh, because the move will always be overdone to an extent. Um, I think there's also the fact that uh, we we we've got to accept the fact that algorithms do these trading algos do play a part in these moves. So when you start to see these stops being triggered, I think that's where the algos kick in, which exacerbates. Uh, the move that little bit further. Well, I think it's just talking one of about these... exacerbation. The silver actually was uh, even a little bit more criminal than the gold because people that would have had stops under the lows in gold, they're still alive, right? They could mm -hmm. have their stops under the May lows, but look at the silver. They took every potential long out for the last five months, uh, no matter where their stops were. So uh, to me, that was really the key move. Uh, is what happened with silver. So where are you at on Aussie and Kiwi with this type of price action and uh, also maybe a little bit on Canada that's been under pressure despite the correlation of uh, wheat crude, that correlation has broken down. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think dollar cad's looking incredible right now, to be quite honest. Um, so I'll come to that one in a second. I think one of the things that strikes me about the Aussie is, of course, it's got its commodity linkage. But we're looking at these levels now around 76, 76, 50, just shy of 76, 50, call it 76, 35. And how many times have we seen these long upper wicks forming? Are these, I feel like we're getting warning signals one after the other. We don't have the upper wick here, but we did 
see the immediate reversal to the downside from these levels. We test this once again, and it's been rejected for a yeah. fourth or fifth time. I think this is potentially suggesting we're heading uh, a little bit lower. We are continuing to drive high, but the, the strength of these rejections, I don't think we can ignore right now. So it's going to be very interesting to see how we trade back around these kind of 75, 35s, should we test that. Uh, over the next few days because like I say we've got a confluence of moving averages there it's clearly been a key zone especially over uh, since the start of May and all of these rejections really do um, scream that the, it, it does really suggest to me that these are warning flags all over the place uh, but like you say dollar card I think um, I think it's looking absolutely great fantastic at the minute because we've had this very long term rising channel really May right. last year, a year of a rising channel. And let's face it, from a fundamental perspective, the, the uh, dollar CAD was looking bullish. Uh, we've, we've got the, U, uh, the, the US economy, which seems to be on a different path to everyone else in the world. We've got the fact that Canada, with the oil uh, link, seem to be uh, struggling. We've got the fact that we've, there's all these reports about the housing market, about uh, extremely high um, housing valuations and the issues that, which could result from here. And yet the Canadian dollar just continues to strengthen, continues yes. to strengthen the hawkish rhetoric coming from the Bank of Canada, the stronger retail sales figures, etc. And but what we this has led to now is we've got this rising channel, which has been a year in the making, and we break below it. And then we had this little bit of consolidation, but even then the consolidation is slow. I think this always is this is always the big giveaway. Where's the slow moves appearing? Um, here we saw the slow moves appearing to the downside, gradual, 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 and then we burst higher. Here we were burst lower, and then we gradual, gradual. Yeah, real gradual back. there, and that was with crude collapsing up there. So what you exactly. say is gradual is equals corrective, and what you yeah. see is rapid is impulsive. Well, think if you think about it just psychologically, a gradual move higher suggests a significant resistance to that move, and while it is right. continuing to push higher, that, that significant resistance, as soon as the buyers give way, in this case. Then you see these big aggressive moves. You see this candle here, I think, is particularly interesting. You see the move now that we've seen today. We've now seen a long-term channel, which has been broken. We've broken back below it once again. We had this short-term corrective move, and now we've broken through it quite aggressively again. I think this is potentially looking quite bearish um, right now. Um, I think the 130s, if we can reach those levels, and I think that'll be extremely interesting because that's a very long-term uh, support here. But we're looking at these moves here, and... I struggle to see any reason why this isn't bearish. We even look at the momentum indicators, and they seem to be uh, very much supportive of further downside in this dollar-Canadian pair. I think if we can trigger this move below these kind of 130, 180s, um, then I think 130 looks very much on the cards. Okay, great look, Craig, and what a great interview. I'm so Thank you glad. very much for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that I reached out to you again and brought you back. I learned from you today. Uh, you know, I, I really some great insights about, you know, after spike events, watch the nature of the move in a recovery and some very good looks and uh, these different instruments. So I know that your Twitter handle is Craig underscore Forex. What's the best way? And I do encourage everyone that is listening to us live or here's the video that you follow Craig for his views. People could also get your views on Market Pulse? That's right, uh, www.marketpulse.com. You can get a, okay. a lot of the analysis which we post as well as some of the other analysts as well. Okay, so that's kind of like the analyst arm for Orlando. Market that's Pulse. right, yeah. So, right, yeah, right. yeah, so we've okay. got the analysts around the world, Toronto, Singapore, Israel, etc., and of course London, and we all post our commentary up on there. Okay, let's see. Oh, Craig, one last question. Where do you see the gilts going from here? Gilts. Um, see, I, I, I still see uh, yields staying quite low. Um, as far okay. as I'm concerned, I, 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 I'm still of the belief that we that we should that we shouldn't and that we probably won't see a, an interest rate rise until after the Brexit negotiate until after say March 2019. Um, I think it's okay. and given given the way the data is looking and given the way the economy is expected to perform in the interim, I think rate rise, raising interest rates in the meantime, in the face of just just due to um, the currency moves, I think is quite frankly ridiculous. Um, and I think as long as uh, the bulk of the MPC members agree with me, then I think um, I think that should keep yields quite low. 
Thank you, Craig Erlen, my trading warrior brother. May pips rain down on you and everyone whose words you touch. And uh, I really, really appreciate you. Thank you, Craig, for coming in today and inviting me and everyone else. And keep right, up the good work, guys. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Face. Thank you, Steve Volge. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Velu. Thank you, Stelios, who was a TV star today. Now you did an interview. And uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, sign up. Remember how many man hours these guys go through to have this information at their fingertips. And most of all, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See you tomorrow. I have Walter Vanelli lined up for tomorrow. Walter has no ax to grind. He doesn't sell anything. He's just a trader who makes a lot of money trading his own account. So see you tomorrow for Walter Vanelli. Adios, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. Enjoy the summer. Adios.